Welcome to UK Explored. In this video, we're taking a look at three of the worst areas to live in the Forest of Dean. The Forest of Dean is an interesting area. It has a stark contrast of picturesque natural beauty and nature, combined with high crime rates, drug abuse, dilapidated buildings, and deprivation. So let's dive in. Third on our list is Colford. With a crime rate of 81 per 1,000 residents, Colford certainly isn't the most dangerous place to live. Plus, with a population of just 9,000 or so, I think most of the troublemakers are well known at this point. However, looking at some of the recent headlines, there are some shocking ones like body parts being found in a suitcase and fatal stabbings. But those are outliers, if that makes you feel any better. It's more so assaults and antisocial behaviour around the local pubs, the town centre and in the worst of the estates that makes up for most of the crime. The issue in general with the forest, and this is the same with a lot of areas outside of the main cities, is the lack of quality infrastructure, amenities and job opportunities, and in particular, nothing for kids to do. Looking at the Office of National Statistics, the data reveals that around 56% of households in Colford meet the criteria of being classified as deprived. And walking around the estates, it's clear to see why. Here are some of the shots of the housing estates there. I mean, that seems like a good place to keep a skateboard, doesn't it? The average house prices in the last year was around the 275,000 range. That'd get you a decent semi-detached house in one of the housing estates. However, if you have dreams of living somewhere a little grander without any close neighbors, and I can't blame you, you'll also find properties like those in Colford and they go for 600K upwards. Here are some more shots of Colford town center. It's a market town at heart and the local shops are holding up pretty well in this current climate, to be honest. Next on the list is Lydney. A little south from Colford, you'll find the town of Lydney, situated on the west bank of the River Severn. Lydney has a very similar population to Colford, but a higher crime rate. And I can tell you from walking around it that it definitely feels like you've taken a wrong turn. Like most forest towns, most of the crimes are violent offences and antisocial behaviour. Some of the recent headlines include home burglaries, drugs and cash being seized at a kid's party, smash and grabs in town, things like that. We couldn't help but notice that the pharmacy had had its door put through when we were there. So I looked that up and apparently some guy who was already on tag broke in and stole some medications. The report didn't say what he stole, so it was, you know, probably cough medicine, right? The town centre is looking pretty run down. There are some blocks of flats just a stone's throw away. And of course, we saw the odd shopping trolley or two and some mattresses thrown out. Two things I noticed that make forest towns look more untidy than unnecessary is the fact that most houses have large unkept front gardens and the council just doesn't seem to keep on top of mowing out the grassy areas. The tourist board lists going for walks bike rides and exploring the parks as the three main attractions when visiting Lydney. That just about says it all and there really isn't much else to do outside of that so again the youths get bored living here. Average house prices for Lydney were 274000 over the last year which is very similar to Colford. If you want a detached property and I think most of us do you're looking at around 362000 and upwards and you will get a lot of land for your money there. Nothing exciting to report from the town centre in terms of shopping, although it is nice to see so many small businesses operating on the high street, and there is a good selection of takeaways and food places. Topping our list of the worst places to live in the forest, we have Cinderford. Situated on the far east of the forest and with a population of less than 9,000, Cinderford was built in the 19th century due to a rapid expansion of the coal and ironworks in the forest. This is why the housing is very similar to that of the mining villages of South Wales, with these rows of off-coloured terrace housing. And much like the Welsh mining villages, the decline of the coal industry in the 1950s and 60s has had a damaging effect on the economy that can still be seen today. As we take you through the main high street here, you can see that loads of shops are boarded up and closed down. And even some of the businesses that are open look like they've been closed for years, to be honest. Who needs a Sainsbury's when you've got a Cinderbreeze, right? 
We were tempted by those exotic meats, but had a healthy skepticism as to what we'd actually be eating. If you like independent cinemas, the palace has some cracking reviews. That YMCA building is a community-focused non-profit that looks more like a fortified drug hangout than it does a place to shoot some pool. Onto the crime issue, the stats are pretty alarming. Cinderford is the second most dangerous town in the whole of Gloucestershire. These charts show that it's topped with the usual violent and antisocial behaviour issues. And there's definitely a bump of crime during the summer months. Some of the recent headlines include cannabis farms being shut down, which is a popular side hustle in the forest, various burglaries and robberies, crazy road rage incidents, and so on. The reason why we rank Cinderford number one is because in addition to the crime stats being the worst in the forest, Cinderford is also the most deprived area, with 56.8% of households living in poverty. That's pretty shocking and it's sad to hear. Something else I want to mention is that there is a guy who made national headlines this year because he built an illegal leisure centre in his back garden. And he actually went to prison because he refused to tear it down. We tried to knock on his door to interview him, but he wasn't having any of it. In fact, he's become quite the problem for his neighbours and we uncovered some interesting little things going up on that hill. If that's something you'd like us to try and do again or explain in more detail, do let us know in the comments and we'll try and get through to them again. Average house prices in Cinderford are around 230,000. That's a lot less than the other areas we've covered, so it's fair to say that the price reflects what's really going on over there. And we'll leave you with some of the better aerial shots of the forest so we can end on a high note, because it is a beautiful area in places. And as always, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you live or have lived in any of these areas or similar areas in the country, we'd love to hear about your experiences. Oh, and please do subscribe if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate that too. See you in the next one.